Daly. Uh, thanks, Daly to Daly. thanks Concorla. Uh, Minister, this uh, question takes place in the context of the upcoming <laughs> adoption information and, and tracing bill and the importance on the need um, for people to access information in relation to their identity. Now, the argument put up against this has been the alleged right to privacy, and I'm really wondering upon what basis has the Minister been advised that that is a block uh, to somebody having a right to access the identity of their, their natural uh, mother. Uh, thank you, Deputy Daly, for that question. Um, the heads of that bill will go to committee. I have made a decision uh, uh, as an, and informed the House, and it's lined with parliamentary reform here, uh, that the heads of that bill uh, will go to the committee. And I do want to say to you that when they do, I think the complexities uh, of the situation uh, regarding access uh, to information for those people who've been adopted, the complexities and the parameters, I think, will, will emerge uh, very quickly once the discussions begin on the uh, on the, the heads of the bill, and it will give an opportunity to tease out the very question uh, which you've asked. Uh, in, in reply to your particular question here this morning, can I say that the right to privacy has been firmly established as a constitutional right through a series of legal cases which began in 1974 with the McGee versus the Attorney General case, uh, which concerned marital privacy, and culminated in the Kennedy uh, versus Ireland case in 1987, where a general constitutional right to privacy was recognised. The right to privacy was also recognised in the case that you quote, which is the IoT case, a Supreme Court case from 1998. The case concerned two people who were the subject of informal adoptions. The majority of the court held that a natural child had an implied constitutional right to know the identity of his or her mother, though this had to be balanced against the right of the natural mother to privacy. In considering the right to privacy of a birth mother in the context of the bill, the Adoption and Tracing Bill, as I had previously advised the House, very complex legal and constitutional issues have risen in the drafting of the bill. A particular difficulty has arisen in seeking to reconcile an adopted person's request for information about his or her identity with the right to privacy of his or her birth mother. So we're in a different position to other countries uh, that don't have a constitution. While I am, I am anxious to improve the legal basis for access to adoption records, my proposals to government have to reflect the constraints on the legislature in providing such access if they are not to fall foul of constitutional challenge. Now, the Office of the Attorney General has provided comprehensive legal advice to my department that has assisted in identifying the constitutional parameters within which the heads have to be drafted. And it is on the basis of that legal advice that I have indicated there is a need to take into consideration the constitutional right of privacy of the birth mother. The minister there, the rest and just to finally say this, Cahirla, I understand uh, and I know that the legal advice did consider the IOT case, while noting, as I did earlier, that the circumstances circumstances there did not involve a case where an adoption order was made, but in circumstances where an adoption order is made, under law, severing parental rights and duties, a birth mother's right to privacy may have more force. You, and Mr. that is the legal Mr. advice Mr. that I have at present. And a huge amount of work is being done to see, and I can say a little bit more when I, when yeah. I come back, come back to, that, uh, come back to in, in the next reply in relation to what actually can be done. Come on, Deputy Clare Daly. Okay, I'd just like to thank the Minister. I have to say the response is quite worrying in some ways. I mean, uh, the good thing is that we're getting a heads of bill going to committee, and I hope the Minister gives some indication of what that might be. But she seems to be adamant that the opinion being given is that this, which I would still call an alleged right to privacy, has some uh, right way above the rights of children to their identity, which I cannot see. And maybe I'll be enlightened at committee, but I cannot see the basis of it. I mean, the IOT versus B case was a case in terms of a, of a fostering arrangement. I note that 11 years after the judgment in opposition, and Minister Shatter, who we've been he hearing over the last day, is the foremost legal expert of modern times, uh, actually deemed that the issue wasn't rocket science, that it had been addressed in neighbouring jurisdictions, and that someone who was adopted across the border in Nor Northern Ireland has substantially uh, greater rights than someone has in this state that it could be uh, addressed, so maybe his advice could be uh, sought on this as well. Thank the you. difficulty here is that the judgment in that case made the assumption that a natural parent wouldn't want to be contacted, and that doesn't have any basis in reality, because most of the adoptions were forced adoptions, they weren't proper adoptions at all, some of the ones uh, from the past, and all experience shows that most uh, parents 
do want to link up with their children later on, Thank and when they Debbie. don't initially, it can be overcome, but there are other measures Mom, that can be put Minister. in place there. I mean, I think the points you make are very interesting, and I do believe that a certain amount of the scenario that you've painted can be dealt with in legislation. So, for example, where a birth mother uh, has no objection uh, to contact being made. I think it is possible uh, to put in place a, a scheme and a system, uh, perhaps with mediation and counselling, uh, where if there is a grievance to contact, that that can be facilitated. I, I mean, I have to say, I don't think it has been facilitated enough in the past, where there are circumstances uh, where there is agreement. In circumstances, for example, where the birth mother is deceased, um, I, again, I think that could be dealt with in legislation. Um, and where the mother uh, can cannot be traced, but where it's reasonable to presume that she's deceased. I think that can be dealt with. Uh, and perhaps we need to examine carefully what non-identifying information uh, can be given. But I think uh, where uh, the mother, uh, where the birth mother is yeah, adamant and absolutely objecting, and as you say, and I don't think we have evidence uh, for what you've said, but I, perhaps it's instinctive to say that there may be many birth mothers who would be happy for contact to be made. In those circumstances, I believe the legislation should facilitate uh, getting the records together in a way, uh, and I intend doing this as quickly as possible, uh, you, that Mr. makes the records more accessible, uh, that there is a, a statutory basis for, for ensuring that church authorities, GPs, uh, whoever has records, uh, would be under an obligation uh, to provide those records and make it known uh, that uh, they exist. Thank so you. that's what the legislation. That's what I intend the legislation to do. Thank you, Deputy Daly. Final supplementary. Yeah. Uh I, th I think I would like an idea of the time scale, Minister, in which you think that this bill can see its way through uh, the various stages. I suppose the way I would look at it is, is what's your starting point? And to me, the starting point has to be the rights of children to their identity. And if there's blockages to that, uh, allegedly because of uh, constitutional reasons or whatever, then I would put it to you that if ultimately we say that that is the case, then that should be addressed because a right to privacy being an absolute right in this case I don't see it. The right to privacy is a waivable right, in my opinion. Most civilised societies have a system of tracing which is very straightforward, it's very open, it's completely different than the setup we have here. So if there's impediments there, we have to move to put them in. I think it was a really unhelpful way in which maybe sometimes the Adoption Act kind of provided for a, a permanent severing of the relationship between a natural parent and actually between uh, unmarried mothers and their non-marital children uh, rather than anything else which is just a throwback Thank and you. we have to be very very open to how we change Minister, these. Final reply. Well, well just to be clear my starting point uh, in relation to this legislation has been to provide as much information as possible. Um, personally I think the concept of open adoption is, is, is the way forward and certainly for future adoptions in this country I would want to make it absolutely clear in this legislation legislation will deal uh, with that aspect, that information should be available. When it comes to historic uh, adoptions, uh, what's clear is that it will be, uh, we, we will examine the legislation, we make sure that it will go as far as is possible. Um, where there are barriers, it may be possible, for example, to have a provision uh, that would give access in certain circumstances, perhaps through the High Court, uh, for that right to information. But I will be bound, and I am bound, and the Committee will see it as we discuss this legislation that there will be this balancing between the very strong constitutional provision around privacy and the right to identity. But I do take your point that um, in terms of from the child's perspective and, uh, and, and the adult who's been adopted, clearly uh, access to as much information as possible um, is where we want to be. Thank you, and uh, the, I would hope that the, uh, a lot of work has been done, a huge amount of work has been done on this. Uh, the heads of bill um, are pretty close to completion and I would hope that it would go in uh, to the committee. I can't give you an exact timetable because we've got some recent advice, legal advice in February. We have to take account of that, build it into the heads of, of bill that I'll be putting forward so that we have uh, the most, uh, as clear heads of bill as we possibly can so that the issues uh, that are at the cutting edge that you describe can be dealt with most effectively and understood in committee. Thank you, Minister.